Okay, home stretch here. Uh, our next speaker, uh, Alex Resvin, hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, will talk about novel microarray based uh, platform for blood analysis. Alex. Hello. Okay. Works. All right. Well, so I'm uh, next to last speaker, which is, uh, which is a good spot to be, I guess. And um, so I would like to tell you a little bit about the project that's ongoing in my laboratory. And in general, my lab is interested in developing micro devices and micro pattern surfaces for cell analysis. And the project, and a snapshot of a project that I will tell you about is, uh, is a microarray based platform for blood cell analysis. And specifically, we're interested in leukocytes, or white blood cells. <coughs> so just, uh, so just, a bit of, uh, just a bit of a brief uh, background on what the standard technology is for white, blood for, for white blood cell analysis is. And the standard technology is a flow cytometer. Flow cytometer is a device that contains lasers and, and photomultiplier tubes. This device forces cells into a single file and forces them past past the laser, uh, laser is going to hit the cell and it's going to excite a fluorophore that, that's bound via an antibody to a cell. So cells, white blood cells express uh, surface antigens. There are antibodies that bind to surface antigens and antibodies are fluorescently labeled. So based on, uh, based on fluorescence and based on the number of fluorescing cells, uh, this device generates uh, cytograms or dot plots uh, like this. And so it's a, it's a wonderful, robust technology that's been around for 30 years or so. Um, it's robust, it's high throughput, uh, it's capable of multi-parametric analysis, meaning that if you have a lot of, or if you have several uh, lasers with several excitation wavelengths, you can look at several fluorophores. Uh, where it's suboptimal is, first of all, it's expensive. Uh, anything that, invi uh, that involves lasers, photomultiplier tubes, and fluorescence is expensive. Uh, it's not really suitable for analysis of uh, small samples. Cells are always in transit, so you can't really, you can't really focus on the same cell over time. And, uh, and so one cannot really do single cell interrogation, function analysis, etc. It's, it's not, it's not as, as, as suitable. So as I said, flow cytometry is gold standard technology for white blood cell analysis. And... Um, uh, w where white blood cells are important, anything that, that involves immune system, uh, what white blood cells are responsible for, and uh, one, one disease that's, uh, that's compromising immune system is HIV. When HIV uh, gets to a certain point, it's called AIDS. AIDS is, uh, AIDS is um, sort of manifested by depletion of a specific white blood cell type called CD4 T cell. When CD4 T cells in blood get below a certain point, approximately 500 cells per a microliter, uh, a person is, is classified as having AIDS. <clears throat> so so how, the, how is AIDS uh, testing performed or HIV uh, testing performed uh, in a, in a resource-poor setting? Well, this is a, a photograph of a a flow cytometry unit, it's, it's a mobile flow cytometry unit that rolls in, uh, into a village once in a while. Uh, the villagers gather together and they, they uh, donate blood and, and do uh, HIV testing. So obviously, obviously there are limitations uh, due to the cost of flow cytometry that would, uh, uh, where uh, HIV monitor, for example, would not be as rigorous because, because, of, because of the cost of of this uh, flow cytometry uh, devices and, uh, and, and the mobile units. <clears throat> so what, uh, so what we're interested in, in general, is developing devices and surfaces uh, that are smart surfaces that can be used for optical cytometry, where cells are presented on surfaces in regular and ordered fashion. Uh, and so, uh, so this would allow us to position individual cells precisely on the surface. This would allow us to create high density cell arrays for rapid optical screening. And, um, and also, uh, today I want to show you a little bit about 
placing multiple antibodies on the same surface. So instead of doing flow cytometry where you are tagging cells with antibodies, antibodies are presented in solid, in solid phase on the surface and cells bind to these antibodies. So these are uh, 10 micro, uh, 15 micrometer by 15 micrometer wells uh, photo patterned in a, in a polymer and, and, and single T cells are immobilized inside. These are printed antibody spots that are colored in uh, green using immunofluorescent staining. And the blue dots are cells that are localized to antibody spots. So we design surfaces in such a way as to uh, eliminate or minimize uh, background cell attachment and guide cell attachment to antibody spots. And as I will show you, what we are doing essentially is we are quantifying a number of cells attached on specific locations. So, so this is sort of location in encoding cytometry where, where we can look at, at the location and, and at the number of cells in a specific location and get information about leukocyte uh, proportions and, uh, and the number of cells. We are using robotic uh, microarray technology, same technology that's used to print uh, DNA arrays, to print arrays of antibodies. Uh, and, and the beauty of this is that you could have positive controls, negative controls, and, um, and your uh, antibodies of interest all in one, all in one uh, uh, um, array, uh, a miniature array. And this array can be, uh, can be placed inside a microfluidic chip, so, you, so one can minimize the blood volume that's required for analysis. And, uh, and so it could be a low volume and low cost solution for uh, quantifying um, for quantifying leukocytes. And this is just uh, sort of a last slide. Uh, unfortunately, you can see very well, but um, there is a lot of data that we have that shows that if we print a certain antibody, we can get we can get a specific cell type in high purity immobilized on this antibody. And so what's happening? Uh, there are antibodies that are specific against uh, CD4 T cells, and we actually get CD4 T cells from whole blood immobilized on, on these antibodies, and, uh, and we can get a ratio of CD4 T cells against uh, another T cell type, CD8 T cells. So what's happening, CD4 T cells would get depleted in HIV uh, during HIV infection, and CD8 T cells would, would remain constant, so the ratio changes, the ratio decreases, and, um, uh, and this graph shows that when we quantify CD4 to CD8 ratios by uh, flow cytometry, it correlates fairly well with, uh, with information that we get from um, uh, antibody arrays. But the idea here is that there is no fluorescent staining, and essentially one could have a surface with imprinted antibodies, and one can capture cells and, 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 and count cells or, or, or come up with some. And, perhaps, and, and that's something that we do not have, and that's something that, that perhaps there could be suggestions on is how to, how to quantify cell numbers in a um, sort of fast and reproducible fashion. But um, that's, uh, oh, I, I have to stop. Oh, I didn't look at that. I'm sorry. So I'm stopping. trying to keep us all on